Hey guys, Chris from adapt vision here, and this is video number two in my balance sheet series. If you want to check out the other videos I've done on balance sheets, I'm going to put a card up there with a link to the playlist, and you'll also find a link in the description below to carry you to that playlist. So if you need to check out those videos, be sure to do so. So in this video, I'm going to be covering two specific sections in the balance sheet. I'm going to be covering the current asset section and the current liability section. So the non-current asset section, or what some of you all know as the fixed asset section, I'll be covering that in a different video in addition to the capital section, right? That'll be in a separate video, which I, of course, will link. I will attach to the playlist and link in the description below when I do make that video. Now, as we go through the video, I will be covering some items that I didn't talk about in my previous balance sheet video, like accrued and prepaid expenses and the provision for bad debts. Now, the thing is, I've made videos covering those topics already. So in this video, I'm not going to be going into a whole long explanation of each of those things. I will talk about them a little bit, but of course, if you want to go a bit more in depth into each of those things, I will put links in the description below. So please feel free to check those things out. And with all that said, let's get into the work. Okay guys, so here we have example one and it says accrued and prepaid expenses. Now, as I just mentioned in my previous clip, this is one of the topics for which I have already made a video. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a card up in the corner there and a link in the description below. So if you want to check out a slightly more in-depth video on accrued and prepaid expenses, please feel free to take a look at those. But what we're going to take a look at now is where do we put these items when it comes to the balance sheet, the statement of financial position. So let's take a look. So it says Luke Awai is giving us his info as at 31st January 2017. What do we have? We have inventory, which we also know as stock, account receivable, which we also know as debtors, cash at bank, cash in hand. So right away, we recognize these as the four basic current assets that I mentioned in my previous video. And they're listed in the order of permanence, with so the longest lasting asset or most permanent asset being listed first, and then going down in decreasing order of permanence or increasing order of liquidity. Liquidity being how easy it is to convert an asset to cash. Right Now, stock is the least liquid or most permanent current asset because it's never bound to be sold. Maybe the stock you have on hand became outdated or obsolete or something was wrong with it and nobody wants to buy it. So then you're going to make a loss on that whole batch because you have to throw it away. So stock is the most permanent or least liquid current asset because it's never bound to be sold. Accounts receivable or debtors, right? So that's also relatively permanent and not as liquid as well cash at bank and cash in hand because there's always a risk that your debtors will not pay you back. Of course, if you knew who wasn't going to pay you back, you probably would not sell to them on credit in the first place. But the thing is, we don't always know who will not be able to pay us back. So it's a risk we take. And cash in bank, cash at bank, sorry, and cash in hand are already in liquid form. So as, we, as I mentioned, sorry, in the previous video, this is the order of permanence and this is how the exact order is going to appear in the balance sheet. Now, I did mention that there's another order called the order of liquidity. I won't be doing that in this particular video. I might do a follow-up video with that particular order. All right, now let's take a look at the rest of the information in the table. So it says accounts payable and on loan for six months. So accounts payable we know as creditors sometimes and loan for six months. So both of those are liabilities. Those are amounts we owe to parties or entities other than the owner. In other words, we have an obligation to repay those particular amounts to those people. Now, below the table, we have additional information. Always, always, always read your additional information because that will give you extra information you will need to be able to properly complete your financial statements. Whether you're going to put the figures there as they are in the financial statement or you're going to use those figures to modify the figures in the above information. Always, always, always read your additional information before you start anything. Read the whole question, but especially that. Okay, what do we have? We have prepaid electricity, accrued wages, prepaid rent, and accrued telephone. Okay, so we have two prepaid expenses and we have two accrued expenses. Now, prepaid expenses are current assets. Why? Because they represent expenses that we have paid for before we have incurred them. So like the electricity, we paid in advance of having used the electricity. Same thing for the rent. We paid in advance of having occupied the space. Now, most rent contracts require renters to pay in advance, right? It's a, it's a kind of safeguard to the landlord. 
But what that means is when we pay in advance, we now have a reasonable expectation that we will receive a benefit in the foreseeable future. And hence, that is an asset. We mightn't own the electricity, we mightn't own the property, but again, we have a reasonable expectation that we will receive that benefit in the future. And that is also an asset. And that's why they are classified as current assets. Now, accrued wages and accrued telephone. So those are both expenses. Wages, what you pay to your employees, telephone. Well, that's like when you have a phone, you have to pay the phone bill, right? So accrued means that we have incurred the expense, but we have not yet paid it. So if you incur an expense and you didn't pay it, it means you owe money for these things. It's like if you go to a restaurant and you order your food and it comes and you eat it and then they bring the bill. You have incurred the cost of the food because you have ordered the food and eaten it and now you have to pay for it. Same thing. So that way you, you incurred your cost but you didn't pay for it yet. And until you pay for it, it's a liability. Just like these things here. These are obligations that we have to pay wages and telephone at some point in time in the future. So that's a, those are liabilities, right? And again, they are current because we are most likely going to pay them off within a month or two, right? And again, current liabilities are those liabilities we expect to repay within a year or less. So what we are going to do is we're going to take a look at the balance sheet extract showing just these two sections. So I'm pulling that extract up on the right hand side of the screen now. So please always head up your statements, including your extracts and head them up properly. Name of the entity, the name of the statement and the period to which it applies. So we're going to head up our little section here, which is current assets. And the first item we're going to put in is inventory. Again, it's an order of permanence. Inventory or stock is the most permanent current asset, followed by account receivable, right? So normally now we put bank and then cash if you paid attention to my first video, right? But we have the two prepaid expenses. So where do they go? They will actually go after account receivable. And then we'll put in cash at bank and cash in hand there. And we'll get a subtotal for that section, right? So prepaid expenses are considered more permanent than cash in bank and cash in hand, right? Because of course, cash at bank and cash in hand are already in liquid form. They have already been converted to cash. With prepaid expenses, they're not going to be converted to cash unless we get a refund. But again, we can reasonably expect to receive whatever benefit we've paid for within the near or foreseeable future. And it's less permanent than account receivable because again, there's a risk with account receivable that we won't receive the benefit. There's also um, a risk here with that as well, but it's usually considered to be less risky than account receivable. Okay, now what about the current liabilities? So let's get the current liability section headed up. And as we see across here, we have accounts payable, loan, and as I mentioned, the accrued wages and accrued telephone. So we're gonna put those items there. Let's get a subtotal for that section. And now we're gonna take current assets and subtract current liabilities to show networking capital. Now, you may not always have to show networking capital in a balance sheet, the question will tell you. Now, if the question doesn't say what format to use, you are free to use any format you so choose. A um, Couple of things here. One, I know some of you might be saying, but Sue, but Chris, you know, how come you have one item for prepaid expenses and one item for accrued expenses, but you have two prepayments and you have two accruals here? That's because the convention is even if you have multiple prepaid expenses and multiple accrued expenses, you show one line item in your balance sheet for that. You summarize them into one, one line item because you don't want to overpopulate or overcrowd your financial statements. Yes, they may have a lot of details, but you don't have to have an unnecessarily large number of details. So if you have, even if you had four or five accrued expenses and 10 prepaid expenses, you would still collapse it or summarize it into one line item. Right. The next question I'm probably hearing some of you all saying is, so Chris, what about the current liabilities? We, in terms of the order, we have the order of permanence here for the current assets. And well, isn't it supposed to be permanence here in the current liability section? Right. So when I was in form four, five, six, and even UE, I was told that there's no particular order in which you must list your current assets. So, I mean, so we have a bit of an inconsistency in the logic there. Um, but I, I was chatting with my teacher and he was saying that it's a bit more difficult to, to ascertain the actual liquidity or permanence of the current liabilities than the current assets. So with that said, uh, I don't want to rant on too much about it. So just know that it's more important to get your assets in the proper order than it is for your liabilities. I know some of you, your teachers would have given you a specific order. You can stick to that. That's fine. If you have a specific order that's different from what I have here, please feel free to include it in the comment section below so we can share our knowledge and we can all grow and learn together. Okay, so I want to give you guys one of these to try now. 
Okay, so this is practice question one, which is I can't even info at February 28th, 2017. So we have the same four current assets, different figures though, and essentially the same current liabilities, different figures, and we also have additional information. Accrued rent, prepaid wages, accrued internet, prepaid insurance. So what I've done is I've left the example up on the right hand side for you as an example. So what I would suggest you guys do now is pause the video, get your pencil and paper, try the question and unpause it to check out the solution. Okay, how did it go? Did you try it? Let's take a look at the solution. All right, so as per usual, don't forget to properly head up your statement. I hope you did, you get marks for that. So let's put in our current asset section first and we're gonna put in stock, well, inventory and receivables. So let's put those together. And don't forget, yes, we have cash at bank and cash in hand. We know those are gonna come last, but we have our quote unquote new items, prepaid expenses. We have two, prepaid wages, prepaid insurance. So again, you add them together and you put them as one line item, which is gonna be seen right here, prepaid expenses. And now we could put in our cash at bank and cash in hand in their appropriate places. And we will do a subtotal for this section. Cool. Current liabilities now. Let's take a look. So we have two here, accounts payable and loan for three months. And don't forget, we have accrued rent and accrued internet. So we could combine those two into one line item for accrued expenses. 3,000 and 2,000 will give us 5,000. So let's just populate that entire section, right? So, right, so we're seeing the accounts payable, 90,000, as we could confirm from across here. We are seeing the accrued expenses of five, which I just explained, right? The 3,000 for accrued rent plus the 2,000 for accrued internet. And the last item in the loan for three months, right? So we, of course, we get a subtotal for that section and we subtract that from the 196 to get net working capital, right? So you're seeing here in the exam, in the question, sorry, I, I have used brackets to indicate that we're subtracting the liabilities from the assets. Now the brackets are not necessary. I was trained with brackets. I like them as a visual cue to know those are deductions or negative items, but you don't need to use the brackets, right? Some people use minus signs instead. Some people don't. The brackets actually do kind of clutter up the visual space. But again, I'm, I'm just kind of accustomed to it. So you'll see my negative items having brackets, right? So if it's bugging you, I do apologize. Anyhow, okay guys, so that's it for the first example and first practice question. Let's take a look at how we treat with the provision for bad debts in the balance sheet now. Okay, so I know I just said that we treat with the provision for bad debts, but I forgot we were doing accrued and prepaid revenue before that. So sorry about that. Right, so as it says here in example two, we're dealing with accrued and prepaid revenue. So a lot of times when students deal almost exclusively with accrued and prepaid expenses, and then the words accrual and prepayment automatically take on the connotation or context of expenses. The truth is we can have accrued and prepaid revenue as well. So what is accrued revenue? What is prepaid revenue? So accrued still means that it wasn't paid, or in this case, because we're talking about revenue, it hasn't been received. So if you earned money, but you didn't receive it, as in you weren't paid for your goods or services, that means somebody owes you money. And that is a benefit you can reasonably expect to receive in the foreseeable future. So again, that's a current asset. Similarly, with the prepaid revenue, that's where somebody pays you in advance of you delivering your good or your service. So now that they've paid you in advance, guess what? You have an obligation to deliver your good or your service to the people who paid you. So anytime you have an obligation to any entity other than the owner, yes, that's classified as a liability. And in this case, we'll classify it as a current liability because we most likely have to deliver or honor this obligation within less than a year. All right. So let's take a look at the example here. This is um, Debo Tadem Info at 31st March 2017. Right. So we have inventory, account receivable, cash at bank, cash in hand. So the four standard current assets. Accounts payable, loan for five months, so current liabilities there. And of course, additional information. Accrued rent expense, prepaid telephone. Okay, so we have an accrued expense and a prepaid expense. We know what to do with them. And here, highlighted in gray and bolded, we have accrued commission revenue and prepaid rent revenue. So as I just said, accrued revenue will go in the current asset section because it is money we have earned but not received. So we can reasonably expect to receive it in the foreseeable future. Similarly, prepaid rent revenue is money that people have paid us. So we are renting a room or a space to somebody and they've paid us in advance. 
So we now have an obligation to let them occupy the space for which they have paid. So once we have an obligation to them to provide some benefit, that's a liability on our part. So we are going to have a, an extra item in each of the sections, current assets and current liabilities. So let's start taking a look at this. So again, don't forget to head up your extracts and your statements properly, please. Name of the entity, name of the statement, sorry about that, and the period to which it applies. Okay, so let's head up our current asset section and we're gonna put in the inventory and the account receivable, 45 and 80 respectively. All right, so next we are gonna put in our accrued commission revenue or just accrued revenue, followed by our prepaid expenses. That was the prepaid telephone was the 3,000. And then of course, cash at bank and cash in hand are gonna go last, right? Now, why are we putting accrued revenue before prepaid expenses? Right, so accrued revenue is, is basically more or less just like account receivables. So remember with receivables, trade receivables, that is where people owe you money when you sell them goods on credit. So they owe you money for revenue that you have earned, but for which they have not, well, you haven't received money from them. Same thing here, right? The accrued revenue, the other revenue, like rent of an apartment or some, some property you might have extra, that's not your main source of revenue. So that's probably why we don't put it together with account receivable. Now it's possible that you can group them together, but for now we want to be able to distinguish between them and understand that they can be shown separately. So accrued revenue is kind of subordinate to that. And again, most likely we're going to receive this before we receive account receivable, right? Of course, it's always possible we might not, but we'll deal with that another time. Right, so let's get our, what you call it, subtotal here. And let's start talking about our current liabilities. Right, so again, we have accounts payable, loan five months, and we have accrued expenses and prepaid revenue. So we're going to put those items in, right? So accounts payable, so the 90 and the 60, right? Sorry, 90 here, 60 here, right? And then the accrued expenses and prepaid revenue, sorry. So again, like I said, there's no particular order that I have um, come across that you have to list current liabilities in. Again, if your teacher has given you one and you want to share with us in the comments below, please feel free to do so, right? And as, as you can see here, I haven't put brackets, right? So I guess I didn't put brackets in my examples, but I put brackets in questions. Right, so we're going to take 227 total current assets, subtract total current liabilities, and get net working capital. Again, you may not have to do this in every balance sheet that you encounter, but pay attention to your instructions. If you don't, if you aren't given a specific instruction by your question paper as to what type of balance sheet to present, it's up to you how to present your balance sheet. Okay, so time for you to try a question. Okay, so here we have practice question two. Why are you so information at 30th April 2017? Standard stuff here. And in your additional information, we have accrued expenses, prepaid expenses, and accrued and prepaid revenue, right? So we have the two new items. So I'm going to leave the example up on the right-hand side, just in case you need it. If you don't, if you want to challenge yourself, don't look at it. Just look at the information on the left-hand side. So as I said just now, pause the video, try the question, and unpause the answer. Okay, did you try it? How did it go? Did you look at the, at the example? So let's take a look at the solution. Right, so here we go. So of course, don't forget to head up properly. All right, and let's go from there. So we have current assets to start with. And um, we're gonna start with our inventory and account receivable. All right, those figures are 25 and 35 respectively. Next, we're gonna put in our accrued revenue and then put in our prepaid expenses. So 8,000 and then 5,000. And then we're gonna bring it up, sorry, finish it off, sorry, with the cash at bank and cash in hand, 50,000 and 12,000 respectively. And don't forget to put your subtotal for that section. So now we have current liabilities to deal with. So we have the 45,000 for accounts payable and the 60,000 for the five month loan uh, in the table. Now don't forget you have your accrued expenses and your prepaid revenue. So those will also go in this section, right? Accounts payable 45, accrued expenses seven, prepaid revenue four, loan five months 60. We have our subtotal, which we will then subtract from our current assets to give us net working capital of 90, all right? Okay, so I hope it's going okay so far. Again, if you have any questions, please feel free to put them in the comment section below, all right? Okay, so now we are gonna take a look at the provision for bad debts. All right, so example three, the provision for bad debts, all right? Now, again, 
I have a previous video explaining this topic in depth, dealing with the T accounts, the calculations, journal entries, I think even the extracts from the balance sheet, right? So if you want to check that video out, I'm going to put a card up there and a link in the comment section below. So, sorry, a link in the description below. So if you want to check that out first and then come back here, yeah, cool. If you want to watch this video, then check it out, no problem. All right, so we have Heidi card information at 31st May 2017. Typical items here, inventory, account receivable, cash at bank and cash in hand, accounts payable, loan for seven months. Additional information, that's where our extra information is. So accrued expenses, prepaid expenses, accrued and prepaid revenue, and the provision for bad debts is to be 10% of debtors. Okay, so just a brief explanation of the provision for bad debts. When we sell on credit, that means that we sell goods to customers, but they don't pay us right away. Therefore, they owe us money, and we expect them to pay us that money at some point in time in the future. The sooner, the better. There is always a risk that they will not pay us. So what that means is that the account receivable figure, like for example, this 80,000 here, in that 80,000, there is some portion of it that we are not going to collect. Now, if we knew who wouldn't pay us back, we wouldn't sell to them on credit. But again, we don't know, and hence we are taking a risk. So what we as accountants have to do is we have to be prudent. There's a concept called the prudence concept, also known as conservatism. And prudence is, is the exercise of caution in the first face of uncertainty. Now, how does that apply to what we're talking about here? Basically, what we have to do is we have to estimate what value of that 80,000 we are not going to get. In other words, we have to estimate what, what value of that is going to go bad and subtract it from the 80,000 to paint a more realistic picture of the debt, the actual money that we, ex we reasonably expect to receive and are probably going to get. We're not going to always be or ever be 100% accurate, but we need to have a reasonably accurate estimate in order to have our information in our financial statements um, to, to, to preserve the integrity right, um, of that information in the statements. We don't want it to be uh, a statement that has information that isn't reliable, okay? Anyhow, I don't want to rant on too much about that. Like I said in the other video, I explained it more in depth, but I'm hoping that suffices. Now, what does that mean for our current asset section? Okay, so um, let's bring up the solution here. Well, not solution. Let's bring up the actual balance sheet extract. So let's put in the inventory first. Right. Okay, sorry. Right. Um, <laughs> I forgot. It's in this column here. So I'm going to put my account receivable in this column and I have to find 10%. So all I'm going to do, listen to it carefully, because I know the provision for bad. This is a sore point for a lot of people. All you have to do is take whatever percentage they give you and multiply it by the receivables figure. 10% of 80,000 is 8,000. So we're going to include that here. And we're going to subtract it from the debtor's figure and that's going to give us net receivables right now you may have another name for it uh, i used to call it net realizable value of debtors or whatever the case was and i was told that that's apparently wrong okay cool let's call it net receivables right so again what we do is we we take the provision percentage and we multiply it by the debtors or the receivables figure 10% of 80,000 is 8,000, and you subtract that from your debtor's figure, right? Again, that's to bring down the debtor's figure to paint a more reliable or, or more realistic picture of the actual amount of money we expect to receive. Because again, we know in this 80,000, there's going to be some proportion of debtors who aren't going to pay. But we don't know, so we're estimating to give a more reliable estimate of the actual debtor's figure we expect to collect. Okay, so what else do we have to put? So, of course, we know prepaid expenses, accrued revenue, right? Those will go here as well. So let's put them in, right? So seven and eight. So that's the prepaid electricity and the accrued revenue. And then finally, we have cash at bank and cash in hand. So those are going to go there. And I'm going to put the subtotal uh, right away. Okay. So from there now, let's talk about the current liabilities. So that kind of stays the same. There's nothing that changed between um, the last section and this section, right? As in accounts payable, loan for seven months, accrued wages, and prepaid rent revenue. So all those items are going to go in this section here. Let's get the subtotal to go with it, 
right? And oops, right, so I have brackets, so I should be consistent in my presentation. Right, and then we're going to subtract that 196 from the 262 and get 66,000 for our net working capital. Okay, so you may be wondering, why do I have these figures in this column when I had them in the previous column? That's simply because I need to show working for the provision for that. Well, I need to show this working. And if I show it in the same line, like I'll, I'll show you. Imagine if I had this information here, right? Some people might think, well, I just have to add everything going down and I'll subtract the debtors. Well, the provision figure, sorry. But then you'll be, you'll be double counting the 72 because you already have 80 minus 8, which is 72, and then the next 72. So in order to not confuse the reader, right, you show the work in separately. Now, it's, it's quite possible that you could actually even omit this entire, the entire work in, but at least for the purpose of CSEC, you don't want to do that. You want to show them that you know what to do with the provision for badness, as in how to present it in your statement, okay? Because that's what you're being tested on. All right, so what I want to do is I want to give you guys a question to try now. Okay, so here we have practice question three, which is Mikey Ben. You have your usual stuff in the table. You have a section for additional information, including the new, the new item, the provision for bad debts. Note, it's 12%, right? The, the, the actual percentage can differ with every question, so be sure to read carefully. So you know the drill. Pause the video, try the question, and unpause to take a look at the solution. Okay, so how did you do? Did you have to look across at the, at the example for help, or did you try it on your own? No judgment either way. Let's take a look at the solution. Okay, so for Mikey Ben, let's start off by heading up for current assets. Now we're going to put the inventory first. Let's put that here. And let's deal with the account receivable and the provision for bad debt. So the account receivable figure. Oh, sorry. Again, I forgot. It's in that column. My bad. Right, so the account receivable is 70,000. And the provision percentage is 12%. 12% 12 of 70,000 is 8,400. And when you subtract that, you're going to get 616 Right, now, we need prepaid in expense and accrued revenue, of course, in the reverse order, right? Accrued revenue first, then prepaid expenses, and then bringing up the rare, we will have cash at bank and cash in hand, which we'll put together with the subtotal for that section. Right, so that's how our current asset section now looks. Uh, now, let's head up our current liability section, if I can get the heading to show. There you go. So, what do we have? Accounts payable, short-term loan, accrued expenses, prepaid revenue. So let's plug all four of those in and put the subtotal to. And now we're going to take 196.6 total current assets minus the 140 total current liabilities and that's going to give us our net working capital. Okay, so I hope, I hope it's going okay for you guys. Again, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave it in the comment section below and I'll get back to you at some point in time. Okay, I think we have just one more section to do. Okay, so this says example four, current portion of long-term debt or long-term loan. So you may be asking, well, Chris, what is this? I, I never saw this in school. Right, that's all well and good. So this is also something I did not really encounter until maybe Form 6, to be honest. And, and even so, it wasn't that often. And I really only encountered it more when I went to work in a finance company. And I was looking at their balance sheets and like, what is current portion of long-term debt? And I'm a supervisor was like, Chris, you sure you have a degree? I'm like, yeah. You sure you said teacher accounts? Like, yeah. <laughs> So again, it just goes to show that even, even though you may think you are, are educated and well learned, you may have missed out on a couple of sim simple things in your education experience, right? So always be humble, all right? And be open to learning. Okay, so the name, the first word here, current, that kind of tells us something about where we're going to put it in the balance sheet, in one of the current sections, either current assets or current liabilities. And long-term debt. So debt is not a word that you guys might be familiar with. You might be more familiar with liabilities. Debt and liabilities are synonyms, right? The higher you go with accounting, the more you'll encounter the word debt as opposed to liabilities, right? It's not to say liabilities is an um, obsolete word or it's not used anymore. That, that is not correct. But debt is just easier to say than liability, isn't it? Try it out. <laughs> Right, and then long term. Now, again, we used to use the word long, uh, the, the phrase long term before we used. To, we now use non current, right? But um, yeah, I didn't really want to put non current because then it would have caused this heading to fit into two lines, and I didn't, I didn't want that. So yeah, not a real valid reason. But anyhow, right. So let me explain. So we know current liabilities are those liabilities which we will end up repaying within a year or less. Cool. Most all of the examples and questions you guys have done in this in this video 
they've all had a, a short-term loan or a, a current loan that's been due within five months, seven months, nine months, three months, whatever the case was. Of course, we know we have loans that are due over longer periods of time, five years, 10 years, 25 years, 50 years, etc., etc. Those are non-current liabilities or non-current loans. But remember, when you borrow money, you have to pay it back. Now, the structuring of the repayment agreement differs for every debt instrument, for every loan. Some, some instruments, you might be able to, to repay it at the very end of the loan. So if it's a 10-year loan, you might not have to pay back anything until the 10 years has passed. However, the more popular one is where you pay back an installment in regular time intervals, right? Or, or the same time intervals. So like every year, you might pay back a piece of that 10-year loan. Or maybe every six months. Or maybe every three months. Or maybe every month. What that means is that at any point in time, let's say you have a 10-year loan and you have to pay back a piece every month. That means that within the current year, you have 12 portions, 12 pieces of that long-term loan that are now due within one year. So it means from the, non, the big non-current loan, you have a smaller piece that is due within one year or less. So therefore, you have a current portion of the long-term loan or a current portion of a non-current loan. So I know the terminology may be kind of confusing to some people. I understand. I do apologize if I haven't done a good job. Right, but let me just go over one more time. So, if you borrow money for 10 years and you are promised to pay back month by month, it means that in any given year you have a piece of that loan to pay back. So, it means you are, you are repaying that liability piece of it within one year. Let's say, let's say it's, it's 2021 now, you're repaying, and let's say it was due in 2030, as any loan has to be fully repaid by 2030, but every year from 2021 to 2022, 2023, all the way to 2030, you are repaying a piece of that loan every month. It means every year you have 12 pieces of that loan that are paid back within the year and hence are non-current. Sorry, and hence are current. So those are the, that, that will be the current portion of the non-current liability. All right, okay. Let's just take a look and see where it goes. All right, so we I brought all the regular details forward and I have a new item here, long-term loan, loan for 10 years. Now, this item itself, that's not going to make it inside of the either the current or non-current live, um, live section. Eh? Sorry, I said the wrong thing. That's not going to make it in the current sections. Right now, it's a loan, so we know it's a liability, but it says 10 years, so it's not current. But let's take a look in the addition information. We'll bypass all the regular stuff and go to the highlighted item. Right. So it says 8,000 of the 10-year loan is due in two months. So let's read that again. 8,000 of the 10-year loan is due in two months. Two months is less than a year. So this 8,000 portion of the 10-year loan, that $8,000 is now a current liability because we have to repay it within less than a year. Now, how do we deal with that? We simply include it in the current liability section. right? Now, <clears throat> the implication is that if you were to do a non-current liability section, you would actually have to minus the 8 from the 80 to get the, the remaining portion, which is still non-current, which in this case would be 72,000. But we'll come to that a bit later. For right now, just focus on the fact that if they tell you $8,000 of this loan is due in two months, that's a current liability. Okay, so let's take a look at the solution. So again, please don't forget to head up your statements. I know I'm being repetitive for that, but it's for a good reason. Don't lose out on that mark or that half mark. That could be the difference between a 1 and a 2, or a pass and a fail. Get all the marks you could get, please. Okay, so let's head up our section. We have current assets. So we're going to take a look at inventory and receivables, right? Now, don't forget to take a read of your additional information. There's a provision for bad debts, 10% of debtors. So 10% of 40 is 4,000, and 40 minus 4 is 36. That's our net realizable value. Now, we have a prepaid expense and an accrued revenue. We're going to include them next. And, of course, bringing up the rares per usual, cash at bank and cash in hand. All right. I'm not realizing I didn't do any bank overdrafts. I should have done one. Anyhow, maybe next time. Okay, so now let's talk about current liabilities. So we have the loan for six months, not the loan for 10 years. That is not current, right? Always remember to read your information carefully. 
Okay, so accounts payable is the 60,000. Sorry, I, I didn't highlight that one. So 60,000. We have accrued expenses. We have prepaid revenue. And we have this 8,000 portion. So let's put all of that in, shall we? Accrued expenses, prepaid. Oh, all right. So the loan for six months and then the current portion. So LTD stands for long-term debt, right? Um, but of course, you could put current portion of non-current loan, whatever floats your boat, man, right? Right, so now we have total current assets, we have total current liabilities, so we are simply going to subtract those two to get net working capital, right? So again, the new item here is this current portion of long-term debt, which you will usually find explained to you or you will, you will be informed about in your additional information section. So I want you to know that if you see it there, you know what to do with it. Okay, so I'm going to give you guys one to try now. All right, so this is practice question four, hatch who, bless you, right? Information at 31st August 2017. So we have the usual stuff here, and we have a loan for five years. So that's kind of unusual. Normally, we don't have any non-current stuff, and we're not doing any non-current sections. Additional information. So accrued insurance, current liability. Prepaid wages, current asset. Accrued revenue, current asset. Prepaid revenue, current asset. Wait, why am I doing the question for you? Well, I done start, so I might as well finish. Provision for bad debts, 15% of debtors. So we know what has to happen there, right? Aha, the new item. 20,000 of the five-year loan is due in six months. So again, let's read it again. $20,000 out of the 100 for the five-year loan is due in six months, which means that that portion, 20,000, is due within less than one year, which makes that 20,000 current. Okay, so I'm going to leave the example up on the right-hand side. You know what to do. You know the drill by now. Pause, try the question, unpause. Okay, how did it go? Let's take a look at the solution. All right, so again, don't forget to head up, please, right? Let's go. So we have current assets. So we're going to start, of course, with our inventory and our receivables. Let's put them where they're supposed to be. Now, our provision for bad, this is 15%. 15% 15 of 80,000, I believe, is was that 12,000. So we have 68,000 as net receivables. We have our prepaid expense and accrued revenue to be put next. And then, of course, the last couple of things in the current asset section, cash at bank and cash in hand. We'll put our subtotal as well, and now we'll head up for our current liabilities. So we have accounts payable and a nine-month loan. We have accrued insurance, prepaid revenue, and a 20000 portion, right? A non-current portion of the long-term or non-current non debt. So accounts payable, 60. Nine-month loan, 18. Accrued expenses, 3. Prepaid rent, 4. And current portion of long-term debt, 20. So... Subtotal is 105, subtract that from 210, and you're left with, well, 105, because 105 by 2 is 210, anyhow. All right, guys, so there you have it. That is how you do the current assets and current liabilities sections of the statement of financial position, otherwise known as a balance sheet. Right? I will be making another video to show you how to deal with the non-current asset section, depreciation, and you have two methods, straight line, reducing balance, and of course, the capital section. So look out for those coming up, right? So if you guys have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. If you want to check out any more videos, I'm going to put some cards up here. Don't forget to subscribe and check out my website where you get some more free POA handouts. If you guys want this one there, let me know and I'll put it up for you. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.